Hello and welcome. I'm Tim Moffitt. I'm a professional agriculture comedian and I'm also a dairy farmer and I'm a professional hoof trimmer. And as a hoof trimmer, that's where I get a lot of my jokes. I've trimmed thousands of cows, a few hundred goats, and even did a pedicure on my cousin's girlfriend. Today I will show you how to operate and maintain your new trimming tool, the Hoof Boss, made by Boss Tools. Throughout this video, you will learn how to assemble, operate, set up, and safely use your new trimmer. Before we get started, let's talk about some important details you need to know, like regular hoof maintenance. As a rule of good hoof care and overall health for your animals, it is best to trim every five to six weeks. At Boss Tools, we recommend you develop a regular trimming schedule, which may require more or less often trimming, depending on the natural wear of your animal's hooves. Warning. Never attempt intricate or complicated hoof care problems without consulting with a professional or a veterinarian first. Using the hoof boss without basic hoof care knowledge and anatomy can be dangerous for you and the animal. Whew, glad that's over. Listen, with a little bit of practice, some time, and my expert knowledge, you'll be trimming your animal's hooves in no time. Keep in mind that in time, with some practice, you will be able to trim hooves faster than the traditional way. But this will take practice. Please don't think that you can just zip right through them day one. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get started. The safety guard is preset at the factory, but you may need to adjust it so you can fully protect your fingers during operation. Always make sure the grinder is unplugged before adjusting the safety guard. To adjust the safety guard, first loosen the set screw slightly. Then push the guard into the desired position. Make sure it is fully protects your fingers from the chain disc. Finally, re-tighten the set screw. Just be sure not to over-tighten it. The slit or the opening of the safety guard does not have to be completely closed or the two sides pulled together for the guard to be tight and secure. Remember, always make sure the guard cannot move freely before turning the grinder on. So as you can see, I've got my safety guard on to protect my fingers from the debris. I'm all ready to go. Just make sure when you tighten this screw, you don't over tighten it. You don't need to, just be nice and gentle. You wanna stay below these air vents. If you block these air vents, it overheats. So stay below it when you hold it. The big thing about holding the hoof boss is you wanna hold it in such a way that you have control. You don't want to choke up too high, you don't want to choke up too low. That way you have more control of it. If the animal does kick, it doesn't come fly back and give you a new mouthpiece. So, that's holding it properly. First, always make sure the grinder is unplugged before changing the disc. Next, insert the hex key into the center screw in the middle of the grinder's head. Press the locking button on the underside of the grinder and simultaneously turn the hex key counterclockwise. Once the screw's out, remove the attachment washer and any disc already in the grinder. Put the screw and washer in the middle of the new disc and align the screw with the hole in the middle of the grinder's head. Finally, to lock the disc into place, press the locking button while simultaneously turning the hex key clockwise to tighten the screw. Remember not to over tighten it. Make sure the disc is secure and cannot fall out before turning on the grinder. When assembling the chain disc, you'll need either the four tooth or the eight tooth, two attachment discs, and the attachment washer from the tool. Start by noting the shape and the texture of the attachment discs. One side will appear rough and concave while the other side is smooth and dome shaped. Each attachment also contains two straight edges along the center hole. The attachment washer contains the same straight edges which are used to align the discs. Notice the placement of the tooth and the raker on the chain. The raker should be on the left and the tooth on the right. Start by placing one of the attachment discs on an even surface with the rough side facing up. Then place the chain on top of the bottom disc. Place the next attachment disc with the rough side towards the chain. Making minor adjustments will secure the chain between the two discs. Be sure to align straight edges and both the attachment disc and the attachment washer 
when assembling the chain disc. When you have the disc and washer assembled, place the set screw through the center hole and attach to head of the tool. Tighten your set screw by using your hex key, but be sure not to over tighten, just like before. Proper sharpening the blade will make trimming not only safer, but easier as well. All you need is the diamond coated chain file and a pair of safety goggles to get started. It's recommended to do this about every 20 to 25 trims. Before you begin, make sure the disc is clean and free from oil, dirt, and debris. Set your file in the notch on the front of the tooth. The curve of the file should exactly fit the curve of the tooth, and the top of the file should be flush with the top of the tooth. Slide the file across the face of the tooth, using a moderate twisting motion to discharge metal chips or fillings. Push the file from the longer side of the tooth to the shorter side. Check the clearance of the rakers, which are curved hook shaped links between the teeth. They should clear each tooth by about one tenth of an inch and file down any raker that sits too high. When you first get your hoof boss, it's best to practice on a piece of wood before using it on a live hoof. We recommend you use a 4x4 block of cedar or redwood as their densities most resemble that of a hoof. Remember, never turn on the disc when the disc is in direct contact with the wood as this could cause much harm. Holding the grinder properly, slightly angle the disc perpendicular to the wood. Gently pull the grinder closer towards you as if you were trimming a hoof. Use a smooth pulling motion and don't chop at the wood. The disc is designed to flow easily across the hoof without any resistance. There's no need to force the disc while trimming. Apply light trimming while making a cut, as the disc will do the work for you. This feature helps to decrease the wrist, hand, and arm pain traditionally experienced during trimming. The hoof boss will cut backwards as well. The motion is the same and the back of the grinder shaft will prevent you from laying the disc too flat. You can control the depth of any cut by using the combination of the disc angle, speed you move across the disc, and pressure you apply to the disc. If you hold the disc at 90 degree angle but apply no pressure, the disc will barely cut. If you hold the disc almost flat, the disc will barely cut. This angle provides you with a lot of control but is not practical for trimming hooves as it is too little material. Keep practicing on the wood until you find the best angle, speed, and pressure that you are comfortable using. Always remember to keep your hands away from the spinning disc when the grinder is turned on. Don't reach underneath or attempt to remove material while the disc is rotating. After you turn the grinder off, wait until the disc has stopped spinning before putting the tool down. And don't jam the disc into the wood to stop it rotating prematurely. So you've had a few practice swings, now it's time to get up to the big leagues and step up to the batter's box. There's a lot of variations on how to set up your work area for trimming some animals and there's a lot of different animals. I'm going to show you the basics on how to set up your work area. Always make sure the grinder is switched off before plugging it in. Always wear eye protection and heavy duty gloves while trimming. The chain disc rotates at 13,000 RPM and throws off almond shaped slivers at high speeds that can hurt your eyes if you're not wearing proper eye protection. When using your hoof boss, one of the important things is to make sure you have a grounded extension cord. If you have a GFI plug in your barn, you may want to make sure you're using it. For safety reasons, GFI is the only way to go for an extension cord. One of the most important things in your work area is to keep you between the electrical cord and the animal. So when you come to your work area, place it to the outside and you stand in the middle between the cord and the animal as to keep you both safe. And above all, remember, safety first. Now that you've learned how to assemble your hoof boss and set up your work area, it's time to learn about some different trimming techniques. To do that, we're going to have one of our hoof boss experts explain this in more detail to you. 
first thing I do to the horse before I start is I put on the blanket. The reason for the blanket is because when the slivers come from the four tooth chain, it may irritate the horse at that moment. The first step you do before you go to the hind feet is you take a rubber band and you wrap his tail up to keep it from getting caught in the hoof boss. Again, you take his tail, you twist it, take your left hand, fold your right hand over, take your left hand, grab it, then you take your rubber band and do it like that. You twist it and come back just like that. And you let it down and it keeps it from getting hooked into the four tooth chain on the hoof boss. The next step is to take it and let it touch the horse with it off. And then bring it to the front and let him smell it while it's off. Then you take it, you turn it on in your left hand and you can touch him with your right hand. And what that does is it gives him the vibration from the tool through your body to him. Always make sure you are wearing eye protection, long-legged pants or chaps, heavy-duty leather gloves, and a dust mask if necessary during operation. Never turn the tool on when the disc is in direct contact with the hoof. Before trimming with the hoof boss, make sure the hoof is secured and in a hoof stand. You take your knife, you get all the dirt out of it and clean out around the frog. Because what that does is it dulls the blade. This will save your blade for a period of time. To trim the sole and the wall using your free hand, stabilize the hoof in the hoof stand. Hold the chain disc at a slight angle to the hoof and smoothly pull the tool towards you from toe to heel. Move the tool in a straight path on the edges of the hoof and a more rounded path when you get to the curved toe. Do not chop and do not force the disc. If you hold the disc at a flatter angle to the hoof, the tool will be less aggressive and will remove smaller amounts of hoof. The lighter you trim, the more control you will have over the tool. To trim the flare, rest the horse's hoof vertically on a hoof stand or hard surface and pull the disc from top of the flare down. Depending on the dryness of the hoof, a little more pressure may be required to trim the flare. Should your animal require it, this multifunctional disc will allow you to rough up the hooves before applying shoes. Remember, the desired result is to have the hoof properly protect, support, and balance the animal. Pay close attention to the sole height as it should be lower than the height of the wall. Be sure to check the proper and desired angle when the hoof is laid flat. For extremely overgrown hooves, you may want to start by trimming small portions of the hoof and come back in two to three weeks to trim more. This will slowly set the hoof back into its proper angle while not making too aggressive of a cut at one time. The abrasive disc is our toughest rasp disc. Similar to a coarse file, the red coarse grit rasp is best used to smooth out flaky or dead sole material. Use this disc to put a fine finish on a standard horse hoof after you're done trimming with the chain disc. For beginners and regular maintenance on well-trained hooves, you can also use the disc as a less invasive way to trim your standard horse hooves. Please keep in mind that the chain disc is the most efficient accessory for normal hoof trimming tasks. Although the power rasp can be used to trim, it is best used to assist the chain disc while leaving a fine finish on the hoof. The abrasive disc works similar to the red coarse and garnet fine abrasive disc, but has a grit that falls between the two. Similar to a rasper file, use the yellow medium rasp to smooth out flaky or dead sole material. Face the disc at a slight horizontal angle to the hoof and use a back and forth motion like you would if you were using a regular rasp. You can trim the sole, wall, and flares in the same motion with the power rasp. Use this disc to put a fine finish on standard horse hoof after you're done trimming with the chain disc. For beginners and regular maintenance on hooves, you can also use the disc as a less invasive way to trim. 
Please keep in mind that the chain disc is the most efficient accessory for normal hoof trimming tasks. Although the yellow rasp can be used to trim, it is best used to assist the chain disc while leaving a fine finish on the hoof. This abrasive disc can be used to put an extra fine finish on the hoof after you're done trimming with the chain disc. Its fine grit gently but effectively grinds away hoof material leaving a smooth and even finish. Trim with the fine grit filed disc by facing the disc at a slight horizontal angle on the hoof and use a back and forth motion like you're using a regular rasp. You can trim the sole wall and flares with this disc. For beginners and regular maintenance on well maintained hooves you can also use this disc as a less invasive way to trim your miniature horse hooves. The fine grit file disc can also be used to trim baby hooves by buffing away hoof material with no aggressive cuts. Please keep in mind that the chain disc is the most efficient accessory for normal hoof trimming tasks. Although the file disc can be used to trim, it is best used to assist the chain disc while leaving an extra fine finish on the hoof. This abrasive disc can be used for detailed corrective work. This precision disc has a dual function. Use this disc to reduce hoof wall height by lightly cutting off overgrown hoof material as well as getting into tight spaces. The V-Groove disc is specifically designed to clean out hoof imperfections while getting into tight spaces to reduce the hoof wall height, clean out sand, cracks, resection infected hooves, and white lines. This disc can be used to trim tight spaces around the frog on a horse and between the two toes of cows, goats, sheep, and pigs. This abrasive disc works on all hooved animals and horns. The cutoff disc is one of a kind. There's no job it can't handle. This disc is used to trim off nail heads or cut small metal, plastic, and hoof cast parts. The cutoff disc can also be used to do resections on infected hooves as well as cut off sections of extremely long and overgrown hoof material. Keep in mind that this will wear down quickly and when purchased individually comes in packages of three. This disc will cut through anything, but it is thin enough for you to control with ease. This disc is best used to make direct cuts into or around most hoof abnormalities and extreme overgrowth. The black cutoff disc works on all hooved animals and horns. These sanders will get your hooves smooth and pretty for any show. If you're looking for a better way to get a show ready finish on your animal's hooves, the 60 grit or the 120 grit buffing sander disc would be the best option. After using the chain and abrasive disc, go back over the hoof with the buffing sander disc. Smooth out and shine up the hoof. You can glide the buffering sanders across the hoof to give an even smooth and finished look on the hooves. These sanders are perfect for show animals and very light jobs. The buffing sanders work on all hoofed animals and horns. For the best practices when trimming horns, use the chain disc, green V groove disc, or desired abrasive disc depending on the condition of the desired results. When trimming horns, it is best to ensure that the head is firmly secured to prevent movement. You can smooth out the flaky or dead horn material by gliding the disc along the horn and rounding out the tips or the ends. Use the same back and forth motion across all sides of the horn to achieve a smooth and even finish. When cutting overgrown horns and dehorning, it is best to use the green V groove disc or black cutoff disc. Depending on the thickness of the horn, you may need to start on one side of the horn and finish by cutting from the opposite side. Your cuts should meet in the middle of the horn to remove it entirely. The Hoof Boss comes with a one year warranty. For warranty questions and more information, please visit our website at www.mybosstools.com or call us toll free at 1-877-320-8203. International and local calls at 850-536-6234. So that wraps it up. You've learned how to hold, assemble, and adjust and change anything on your new hoof boss. So whether you're trimming a herd of goats or a group of horses, 
the hoof boss can handle anything you put in front of it. So go out there and trim like a boss.